the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> The makers of Johnson Wax Products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. If you have light-painted woodwork in your home, you know what a problem it is, especially with children around, to keep it clean and spotless. If you wash or scrub it too much, you're apt to injure the finish. What's the answer? An easy one. Johnson's Cream Wax, the wax polish designed especially for furniture and woodwork. This remarkable wax is creamy white, easy to use, needs very little rubbing, and it cleans as it polishes. It actually contains several cleansing ingredients so that fingerprints and smudges disappear like magic. That's not an exaggeration, as you'll realize the very first time you try Johnson's Cream Wax. This polish is perfect for enameled surfaces like your refrigerator, for kitchen tables and woodwork, for your dining room table and sideboard, for chairs, beds, and ornaments. Johnson's Cream Wax leaves a wax film for protection. It gives a lustrous, soft, beautiful polish. Even if you already use the Johnson's Paste or Liquid Wax, try a bottle of the white Johnson's Cream Wax on your furniture, light-painted woodwork, and icebox. You'll like it. Nobody can be so completely Western as an Easterner who has spent two weeks west of Kansas City. Particularly if he is slightly bow-legged to start with. (laughs) And here trying on his old ranch clothes in anticipation of a visit from an old Western friend, we find himself of Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, boy, oh, boy, I sure got gypped when I bought this 10-gallon hat. Why did you? That's an awful lot of helmet for $3.98. Yeah, but I held it under the bathtub faucet, and you know what? What? It don't hold more than six quarts. (laughs) Well, out west, the water goes so much further. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Hey, how do these blue jeans look? They feel like they've shrunk a little. Well, they do look a little tight, dearie, particularly around the... uh... Oh, uh, that reminds me. Will a uh, will a nice ham be all right for dinner tonight? Sure. <laughs> Wonderful. Old Ollie will love it. Incidentally, would you mind telling me uh, once more just who this Ollie is that's bringing us a breath of the great open spaces? Hmm. Ollie Oopdyke. Oh, oh, you've heard me speak of Ollie Oopdyke. Oh. I and him were in the army together in the last war, <clears throat> the big war. <laughs> Where does he live now? Out in California someplace. Big cattle man. Good thing I spent a lot of time out there. Be able to hunker down and palaver some real cow talk with him. Ought to have a swell evening. You'll sure have a ripping time if you hunker down in them tight britches. <laughs> Shucks, gal. Fine clothes and city talk don't cut no cactus when real men folks sit around the campfire. Besides, Ollie'll have to do most of the talking, I reckon. How come, partner? <laughs> I can't talk myself. <laughs> Breeches are so tight, I can't get my breath. <laughs> Better run upstairs and get into my chaps instead, I reckon. Well, uh, take it easy in those high heel boots, McGee. You even wobble when you stand still. <laughs> well, I haven't had them on for several years. They say once you get used to them, you'll never wear anything else. Well, you'd get a nice suntan that way. I mean on your feet. Oh. Well, uh, personally... Hello, Mrs. McGee, Mr. McGee. Hello, Alice. Howdy, Miss Alice. Come in and set a spell, ma'am. I just... Huh? Rope yourself a bar stool and name your pison, gal. How about a slug of root beer? Offer you a chaser, too, but we don't cotton to chasers in this valley. Uh, uh, no, thank you. I don't believe I... Uh, but what... I, I mean... Oh, relax, uh, Alice. He's just getting in the mood to greet an old pal of his from the West. Oh. (laughs) Hunker down by the fire, miss, and let old Hopalong McGee tell you how he used to wrestle cuddle. Or, uh, rustle (laughs) cap. Gee, were you really a cowboy once, Mr. McGee? Sure was, Miss Alice. 
I was top wrangler for the old bar nothing spread out in Blue Diamond, Nevada. <laughs> Spent yards out there trying to find a bull that was nine foot from horn to tail. <laughs> Already had me a cow critter that was ten foot from horn to tail. Well, what did you want such big cattle for? He was trying to get a long little doggy. <laughs> Never forget the time I was chasing a couple of mavericks through a dry wash one day. Uh, what's a maverick, Mr. McGee? Well, he didn't know. He was trying to catch one to find out. <laughs> a maverick is an unbranded cow. Know what a brand is, Miss Alice? Sure do, partner. But I don't pay much mind to brands nowadays. <laughs> Smoke any kind I can get. <laughs> well, smoking was no problem out there, Alice. All has had a couple of butts on their guns. <laughs> well, sir. <laughs> there I was, a yippee ki iron through this here dry wash. Uh, what's a dry wash, Mr. McGee? That's a riverbed without no water into it, Miss Alice. <laughs> well, what is it when it has water in it? A wet wash. <laughs> Well, sir, there I was, sky hooting along, when all of a sudden the big grizzly bar is up out of a cactus bush. You mean rose. No, cactus. <laughs> well, sir, my horse give a snort, sunfish twice, swapped ends, and there I was, a sailing through the air. Landed plumb onto the back of that there grizzly bear. Well, dehorn my Buick. <laughs> Never knowed you was a bareback rider, partner. Never knowed it myself till then, Ma. Well, sir, I clumped my spurs into his withers, slapped him across the face with my sombrero, <laughs> and broke him for riding right then and there. Turned out to be the only five-gated grizzly bear in the whole world. Jeepers, what became of him, Mr. McGee? Had to turn him loose, Miss Alice. Oh? Couldn't find us a blacksmith that could make shoes with toes on them. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am, you dropped your handkerchief. Allow me to... Well, you might have had a nice seat on that bar, partner, but you're a little vice versa right now. Excuse me, gals, while I go up and change my pants. <laughs> my chaps and my neckerchief on. Very horse opera indeed. What are you carrying the rope for? So if somebody calls, you can tell them you're tied up this evening? <laughs> no, nope, I'm going to brush up on my roping. Now, here's how we do it, Molly. We enlarge the loop, insert the finger between the main line and the loop, and with a graceful twist of the forearm, we start swinging the rope like this. One, and two, and... Two. <laughs> <clears throat> too big a loop. <laughs> wonder how bad that window is broke. I'll take a look. 
<laughs> now, if you tell me it's worse than you, you thought because it's broken on both sides, I'll scream. <laughs> Shucks, gal, you ruined my joke. <laughs> oh, well, twarn't much of a joke. Nope. Reckon twarn't. Twarn't. <laughs> nope. Well, seeing I can't twirl a rope in here, might as well try seeing how fast I can draw my shooting iron. They bein' loaded, be they, Paul. My hide starts a-twitching at the sight of shooting iron. No, no, don't get skittish, Ma. Just want to try practicing drawing a bead on something. Now, if I outlaw, or in-law, <laughs> should come a-busting through that door there, I'd have... Hello, folks, I... Hey, take that gun out of my face. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilcox. Howdy, son. Hobble your bronc and light down a spell. How's that again, pal? You heard Pa, didn't you? <laughs> Say it, stranger. Oh, oh, thanks. What goes on, kids? Why is old Wild Bill McGee all dressed up in the cowpoke costume? Expecting a friend of mine from out west, son. Big stock man. We aim to make him, we aim to make him feel at home. <laughs> Not a bad aim either, partner, if you can hold her steady. <laughs> Ain't one to ask personal questions, son, but your face is sure familiar. What outfit you ride for? Wall have been mending fences for the old G bar C spread, Pappy. Mm -hmm. City folks call it the G L O hyphen C O A T outfit. <laughs> well, say, I've heard of them, Paul. Right nice folk. Uh, where are you located, son? The other side of the ridge must be. Yep. East side of Racine Gulch, just above Johnson's Canyon, in the Linoleum Mountains. <laughs> Mighty sightly country, they tell me. I hear there's quite a passel of mountain lions around them parts, son. Sure is, ma'am. Mountains lying all around us. <laughs> Don't twist Ma's words, stranger. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, look, son, I don't aim to be nosy, but uh, what you got in them there saddlebags? Little gift, ma'am. Here, compliments to the old G-Bar C. Well, thank you, son. Hair oil, ain't it? No, ma'am. Glow coat for the linoleum. What's linoleum? <laughs> well, it's a kind of a carpet made out of cork and stuff. Easterners use it to cover the cookhouse floor with. Well, brand me for a stray. What'll they think of next? <laughs> Paul, you got to take the buckboard into town and get me some of that there, uh, um, uh, what was that stuff again, sir? Linoleum, ma'am. Makes a right smart floor covering for places that's liable to get spilled on and foot tracked. Hmm. This here Johnson's glow coat on it saves a heap of house cleaning. What you trying to do, stranger? Break up my home? House cleaning is what I married her for. <laughs> Now, Paul, remember what you says when I give up school, mammon. Mm -hmm. You says when I got the chickens fed and the harness polished and the lamps filled and the windmill oiled and the butter churned and the garden patch weeded, <coughs> I could have the whole afternoon to myself. <laughs> Don't you remember, Paul? Well, I sure, Ma, but I didn't figure on this dude coming along to fill up your time with Eastern, Paul, or all. I've been dreaming for years about having a mighty spare time. Hmm. Like to try some of that there coldy cream on my face. Like it says in the catalog. How does this here gloaty coat work, son? Well, you just pour it out, bam, spread it around, and wait for 20 minutes or less. 20 minutes, huh? That's about the time it takes the shadow of the spring house to creep past the haystack, Ma. I always boil an egg myself. Huh? When it gets hard enough to bounce, it's 18 minutes. <laughs> you know, Pa, if and the price of beef stays up, you ought to get us a clock. <laughs> that calendar keeps time awful loose. <laughs> Well, anyway, ma'am, when this here glow coat dries, your linoleum will have itself a glitter like a cat of Mount's eyeball. Well, we sure do thank you kindly for it, stranger. Sure you won't stay for chow, son. It's just buffalo hump and soda biscuits. <laughs> but you all are sure welcome. Well, that's mighty neighborly of you, mister, but I got to get back to the outfit before dark. Evening, ma'am. Evening, son. Hey, my gosh, you hear that? Sounds like he's riding away. Ha, ha, ha. That was just me a slap in my leg. <laughs> you know, that 
what I like about Mr. Wilcox. He always enters into the spirit of things, doesn't yeah, he? Well, he always enters. I'll go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Say, look, dearie, there's something I've wanted to tell you ever since you came downstairs with those chaps on. Don't you? Hey, think? what do you suppose is delaying old Ollie Oopdyke? Gee whiz, he ought to have been here by now. Well, what time does the train from San Francisco get in? Well, as the guy says when he put the cigarette into the long holder, let's be frank. <laughs> I don't know. You better call up and find out. But about those shares... Uh, hand me the phone. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the Union Station. Yeah, the in for the love of Mike. Is that you, Mert? Oh, dear. <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? Is he? What's he, Mert? Your brother? Oh, well, that's great. First man to reach the Rhine, eh? Oh, isn't that wonderful? How long has he been in the Army? He isn't in the Army. He was in a watermelon-eating contest. <laughs> first, man to, first man to reach the Rhine. What's that, Mert? Oh, busy, eh? Okay, Mert. Thanks, anyway. Line's busy. Well, stop for you now. He'll get here all right. And as I was saying about those shafts of yours... Oh, maybe this is Mr. Oopdyke now, dearie. Come in. Oh, no, it's Dr. Gamble. Hello, doctor. Hello, Molly. Hello, McGee. Well, pull up my pant leg and hog tie my calf. <laughs> if that's supposed to be a riding habit you've got on, Buster, I'd try and break myself of it if I were you. <laughs> Howdy, sawbones. <laughs> sure glad to come. Bring your kit bag out in the corral. We got a mighty sick heifer out there. That's some loco weed, I reckon. Oh, come off it, McGee. You're about as western as the Fulton Fish Market. <laughs> well, he's just practicing, Doctor. We're expecting an old friend of his for dinner. A big stockman from California. Sure be glad to have you nuzzle up to the feed box with us, partner. Vittles ain't fancy, but they're mighty wholesome. Especially the donuts. <laughs> Listen, you miserable masquerading little mugwump. Easy I... on that cussing, stranger. Easy there. There's a lady present. Where? Oh, me. <laughs> now look, you ten-cent reprint of a counterfeit buckaroo. Lay off that bunkhouse baloney. You're about as much at home in the range as a celluloid frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> Old Sidewinder's got the gift of gab, ain't he, Ma? Ah, he sure has, Pa. Spent much time in the cattle country, Doc? No, but I've heard more bull right here than you could pasture between South Bend and Sacramento. Where did little wagon tongue here get so full of tumbleweed? Reckon I never told you, partner. Used to train mules for the Army out in Wyoming. That was a silly aspiration, if ever I heard one. <laughs> hey, uh, Paul, uh, tell about Bessie. You sure done a job with her. Yes, I surely did. Had we one mule, I trained for the signal corps, Sawbones. Name of Bessie. Bessie, yeah. <laughs> Taught her to wigwag with her big, long ears. Used to send her up to the front lines and let her graze. Watched her ears through a pair of barnacles. You mean binoculars, dopey. I always thought binoculars is what they kept a compass inside of. No, that's a binnacle. Don't give us none of that sheep dip, stranger. <laughs> Everybody knows the binnacle is a high peak. <laughs> like the fellow says, reaching the binnacle of fame and such like. That word is pinnacle. You sure, Doc? Thought pinnacle was a card game. <laughs> no. Molly, you're thinking of pinnacle. Len, what in tarnation's a barnacle, city slicker? A barnacle is a marine animal. Well, Bessie weren't. Bessie were an army animal. <laughs> well, sir, we keep a watch in her ears through a pair of barnacles. I pass. <laughs> Bessie kept the wig wagon information back to us. How many patrols was out, where the gun emplacement was, which way the trenches run, and all stuff like that there. <laughs> Took them heinies three years to figure out where we was getting our information from. And then what? As if I cared. Then when they finally caught on, they shot poor Bessie's ears off, doctor. Clear and a whistle. Had to give poor old Bessie a medical discharge. I don't know why that should have stopped an ingenious little rascal like you, my friend. <laughs> why didn't you teach her to signal with her tail? No, sir. I was never one to take no back talk from no mule. <laughs> 
What a cow hand. Have you ever been on a horse that wasn't made of wood and didn't go around in a circle? Oh, sure, Doctor. He spent a couple of summers on his uncle's ranch. Remember those evenings around the campfire, dearie? Sure do. Listening to the cow hands strumming their guitars and singing, I can shut my eyes and hear them now. Yes, sir. Old Slim Darby and his prairie dogs. Squatting around on a tender feet whilst he sings my song. I'm an old cow hand from the Rio Grande. But my legs ain't bored and my cheeks ain't tanned. I'm a cowboy who never saw a plow, never roped a steer, never milked a cow. Sure ain't a fixin' to start him now. yippee ki o ki Woo-hoo! yippee i o ki I punch cattle when they're fried in a pan. I can hardly tell beef from pork. And the only leather I ever pulled was in a subway in New York. Oh, get along, little doggie, get along. Old cow hand. Now, they were Slim, Rimrock Robinson, Deadwood Dobson, and Lightning Rod Lynn. Whatever became of those boys? Oh, big dude named Paul Whiteman heard them and took them back east. Yeah? Last I know of them, they was calling themselves the King's Men. Well. Well, I claim they'll never get no place with a moniker like that there. <laughs> Look, dearie, I don't like to change the subject, but those shaps you're wearing... They're are... pretty snazzy, eh? Hey, what are we having for dinner, Mom? Mr. Ropedyke. No, no, I mean to eat. <laughs> oh, uh, well, ham and sweet potatoes and hot biscuits, uh, lemon meringue pie. How about some maple syrup on the biscuits? As I remembered, old Ollie used to go for biscuits and syrup. Well, I'll ask Beulah if we have some maple syrup. Oh, Beulah! Beulah! Somebody bowl for Beulah? <laughs> You got any maple syrup, maple syrup to put on the biscuits, Beulah? Yes, yeah, so we sure have. <laughs> but with, with ham and yams and pie, it's going to be awful rich, Miss McGee. Oh, let the, let the boys have it, Beulah. It isn't every night we have one of Mr. McGee's old sidekicks for dinner, you know. Yes, ma'am, only it ain't going to be a sidekick. It's his front. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a big cattleman from out west, Beulah. Those guys can digest anything. Well, soap can an ostrich, please, sir. But they always wind up as a feather in somebody else's head. <laughs> well, don't you worry about it, Beulah. It's their responsibility, and we've got to show Mr. Updock that old Western hospitality. Yes, ma'am. As long as we don't have to show him an old Eastern hospital. <laughs> <laughs> reason why I'm wearing this cowboy outfit, Beulah, is I wanted to make him feel at home. Look kind of strange to you? No, sir. They don't? No, ma'am. I cooked for a couple of years at a dude ranch out in Yona, Arizona. <laughs> You mean Yuma, Arizona? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and three years at the Bar O Ranch in Phoenix. The Bar O Beulah. Yes, and they called that because folks was always used to come running up the road to borrow a cup of sugar, <laughs> borrow a couple of eggs or something. <laughs> I always liked Phoenix, Beulah. Beautiful place. Why'd you leave there? Oh, I like Phoenix too, sir, but they wouldn't raise my fee, so I say Nick. <laughs> 
Didn't you like Ranch Life, Beulah? Oh, I was real healthy, ma'am. I admit that, but I'm a city gal. <laughs> you see, I can't get I can't get to sleep less than I hear spenders banging, the flat wheel speak calls clanking, cops whistle, and milkman keep them bottles noisy. <laughs> You mean you'd rather be here with a wolf mooning at the bay than out there with a wolf baying at the moon? Yeah, that's what I said, baying at the moon. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, look at me. I didn't see that. <laughs> I love that man. about to say before you... I know. Those shaps you're wearing, McGee, will you please? What's the matter with them? Gee whiz. I had them made by one of the best western outfits in Trenton, New Jersey. And they told me when they... My goodness, I wonder who this could be. Come in. Well, what is it? What do you want? I'm looking for the residence of Mr. Fibber McGee. Well, this is it. And state your business briefly, bud. We're expecting company. And... I am Oliver Oopdike. Heavenly days, Pa. It's Ollie. Well, <laughs> him stitch my hackamore if it ain't. You ain't changed a bit, Ollie, old hoss. I'd have knowed you any place. Why, sure. <laughs> Lie down and set a spell, partner. You're sure a sight for these old eyes. This here's the little woman, Ollie. Molly, this here's Ollie. Ollie, Molly. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do, I'm sure. Please come in and sit down, Mr. Oopdike. Hunker up to the fire there, Ollie, old Longhorn. Been hankering for some real old corral talk. How many head of beef you running now? How's the grazing? Any trouble with nesters? Uh... Nesters? Homesteaders, partner, always muddying up the water holes. <laughs> and a sight too handy with a running iron, Ollie. How big a trail herd you run this year? Trail herd? You mean cattle, McGee? Why, I have nothing to do with cattle. What? I thought your letter says you were a stockman. I am. Stocks and bonds. I said I was on my way to New York because of bull market conditions. <laughs> Oh. Well, uh, uh, dinner will be ready in just a few minutes, Mr. Oopdike. Would you like to wash up a bit? <clears throat> yes, thank you, I would. Head of the stairs and second door on the left, Holly. Thanks. Mm, stocks and bonds. <laughs> Bull market. Look, sweetheart, <laughs> before he comes back, huh? those shaps you're wearing. Yeah? You're supposed to wear pants under them. Oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I thought they were a little drafty. <laughs> If you're ever in doubt about the kind of polish to use on your linoleum surfaces, let me read you a paragraph I noticed yesterday in a recent issue of a home economics magazine. It's from an article on the care of floors and reads as follows. Never use shellac, lacquer, or varnish on smooth surface floor coverings. These will cause discoloration, and under foot pressure, the finish will break down and form unsightly ridges, which grow worse with each new coat. All experts agree that Johnson's Glow Coat is the ideal kind of polish for all linoleum. It's recommended by the linoleum manufacturers themselves. Glow Coat gives protection against dirt, wear, and moisture. Adds greatly to the life of the linoleum. Keeps it new and fresh-looking indefinitely. And Glow Coat saves you lots of work. First, because it's self-polishing and needs no rubbing and buffing. And second, because spilled things are wiped up in a jiffy. From floors protected with Johnson self-polishing Glow Coat. Folks, about this time of year, everybody's handing out awards for this and that, medals and ribbons and Oscars. Tonight, we'd like to hand out one of our own. This is the first, last, and only Fibber McGee and Molly annual award for services far beyond the call of duty. And the citation reads, To America's number one soldier in grease paint, to the one-man vaudeville circuit, who has brought honor to the radio industry and glory to himself for the untiring work he has done and is doing, to entertain our servicemen in camps and hospitals all over the world without regard to his own health, comfort, or safety. Ladies and gentlemen, our hearty admiration and respect to the lad you'll hear in just a minute, Bob Hope. Good night. Good night, all. This is Marlo Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Limited for Home and Industry, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.